I'm Sarah Thomas. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Teaching Without a Book. Today's show is the start of a free workshop that's going to be broken up into modules and delivered in a three-week series. In this free mini workshop, I'm going to teach you about a strategy that you can use in your classroom to support differentiation and blended learning. I call this strategy a student learning pathway. to use student learning pathways in your classroom, how to create your own, my secrets for making them even more engaging, and you'll even score some freebies to help you along the way. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what student learning pathways are and some ideas for how you can use them in your classroom. In module two, we'll focus on how to build your own student learning pathways. In the third module, we'll focus on ensuring that your student pathways are interactive and as engaging as possible for your students. So first of all, why student learning pathways? We know that personalizing learning for our students is a critical component of engagement. There are many ways to create learning opportunities that meet our students where they are in their learning. And student learning pathways is just one of those tools. Remembering that as educators, we're trying to move to the person that's responsible for facilitating that next generation learning rather than being the person responsible for the transfer of knowledge. So the more that we can front load the learning for our students, that frees us up to be able to meet with our students to close learning gaps as well as provide enrichment opportunities. So what are student pathways? Well, it's a structure of presenting the learning to our students in a step-by-step -step format. Instruction or delivery of new content as well as formative checks can be embedded in this structure as well. It's perfect for any sort of learning situation where you want to walk your students step-by-step -step from start to finish. ways that I've personally used student learning paths in my own classroom are for mastery learning, creating standard-based pathways for gap closing, writing pathways that walk students step-by-step -step through the writing process as a supplement for science and social studies, as well as for enrichment projects. Some other ideas include using them as test prep or for a research project. As we start going through our student pathways, you're going to see that really the options are limitless. They're endless. And I'm hoping that you'll come up with some ideas that you can then share with the community as you're thinking about how you're going to be able to use this for your own personal use with your students in your classroom. So let's get started by exploring an example together. So the example that we're going to look at today is a pathway that I created for science. I really loved creating pathways for science and social studies because I found that there was just never enough time in my schedule to be able to do science and social studies to the degree in which I felt it deserved. Probably a lot of you can relate to that. So what I did was is I created pathways based on the science and social studies standards and this was able to help supplement my own instruction but the kids could do this independently and it walked them through from start to finish. So remember, pathways are perfect for anything where you need to break it down step by step so that your students know exactly what they're doing and where they go next. I often used my science and social studies pathways in our ELA playlist so that when my students would finish up some of the work they had to do, this would be a thing they could then go to as a may do just to have that extra access to this learning. So I create my pathways in Google Slides. You can use PowerPoint, but because my schools have always been Google schools, I found it easier just to use Google Slides. Basically the gist of it is that each slide is a step on the pathway. So I generally try to put one task or one piece of learning on one slide so that it's easy to break it down and students know that this is the one thing that they have to do on this slide and then they go to the next slide. Now some of these slides are connected to outside resources, whether it be other tech tools or apps or even other slides that I created, videos, different things like that. So not every Everything is housed right here in this actual Google Slides document, but this is the main pathway. And then it does branch out to other resources that will help to support the learning that's happening on that specific pathway step. So this is just the introductory slide. And as we walk through the pathway step by step, you can see I have everything in order of how I want the kids to complete this activity from start to finish. Now remember in module two, which we're going to cover next, I'm going to 
show you how to build one of your own pathways. So I'm not going to really get into how like the gist of putting one together right now. We're just going to take a look at what they are in this example of a pathway. So you would share the link to the Google Slides with your kiddos, whether that be via email, Google Classroom, or however you want to share the link with them. So just like any other structure or classroom practice, you of course are going to need to teach your kids how to work through a pathway like physically how to get through a pathway to complete before just handing it out to them. So whether you flip it and do it as a video or you take the time to walk through one together as a whole group quickly, you definitely want to make sure the kids know how to navigate through one. So generally the first step of the pathway or the second slide that I create after the the title slide or the cover slide, whatever you want to call it, is the pathway steps. I like to outline every step or every slide of the pathway so that the students can see what they're going to be doing on this pathway because again especially for science or social studies these are not this is not a pathway that they are going to finish in a day this is not a pathway where they're necessarily going to finish in a week depending on how much time they get to be able to work through this pathway so it's helpful for them to be able to see where they're starting and where they're going and what they're going to be doing in between so I just quickly outline each of the steps and give a gist of what they're going to do on each of those steps so down here you're going to see this little froggy friend And being a teacher of young students, there is a lot of front loading that is required on my part to ensure that my students are successful, especially on something that's independent. So I created a video for them that would just give them some tips and tricks, things of course that I already had taught them when I did the whole group introduction and teach piece of a pathway. But it's helpful to just have some of those tips and expectations embedded into the pathway just so kids are hearing it again and as that extra reminder because reminders, exposure is how students learn and they need to hear things several times. So when I click on the frog, it's going to give them just a short video that I created using an app called Chatterpix just to make a fun little video for them that kind of went along with the theme. Now I feel like I need to stop at this point and just say your pathways do not need to be all fancy in terms of clip arts and pictures and fonts and talking frogs or foxes or whatever. This is a thing I I love to create things. So I am a teacher author and I love to do this kind of work. When I show you how to build a pathway, it's not going to look like this. I do have videos that teach you how to make things look fancy, but that is not a requirement for a pathway and it does take a lot of extra time and I know that teachers don't have time for that. So when I show you how to build a pathway, it is going to be very simplistic and it's going to just get the job done. So I don't want you to be turned off by the fact that this is a little bit fancier, but I do want to show you the tools that are available for you to be able to use to embed into your pathways and we will talk about that in module three. So when I click on the frog, it's going to take us to the video. Hey there, scholar. It may help you to leave tabs open for yourself so that you can go back and look at the information to help you along your pathway. If you get lost in your tabs and can't find your pathway, or if you accidentally click out of your pathway, just go back to Google Slides. You can get there through your waffle. This will get you back to the copy that you made of the pathway so that you don't have to start all over again. Lastly, remember to go slide by slide in order and take your time. Now go and grow that science brain. So you can see that's just a fun little way to make sure that kids remember some of the directions that you gave them. Next are the pathway learning targets or learning target. So what will they need to be able to do? So what will I know or be able to do after completing the pathway? And then it explains to them what that learning expectation is because of course our students always need to know that. And I also always embed with my learning target no matter what, I'm teaching a look for, which is how will I know and show that they met the learning target? So it's great to know your learning target, but then at the end of your learning, how do you know if you met it or not? And so our students need to know that. And so I always give a look for that's going to help them to be able to self-check. Did I get my learning? I usually tell my kids to come out of presentation mode because they're going to need to engage and interact with the slides and they can't do that if they're in presentation mode. So for example, you're going to see that step number one for them on this learning pathway is to watch a video about rainforests and then they're going to complete a Venn diagram where they're going to compare and contrast the tropical and cool rainforest habitats. Then they're going to give three examples of ways that animals or plants have adapted to each of those habitats. So in order to be able to do this, they can't be in presentation mode. So I also just want to point out that I do add the text boxes ahead of time because I don't want them wasting their time trying to make those. So if I do that extra step on my part and front load that piece, it's going to 
save them a lot of time and that's what I need. We only have so much instructional time and what I care about is what the kids are learning. I need them just to be able to get in there and do their job. So they're gonna watch this video and then they're gonna complete this piece of the graphic organizer. After they complete this step, they're gonna go on to the next one which is a habitat sort. And this is also an extension of the last step. So they're gonna click and drag the plant or animal so that it's placed into the correct rainforest. And then when they're finished, they're gonna be able to check their work. So in the tropical rainforest, I know this little bird lives there, right? So they're gonna just kind of work to drag and drop into the correct rainforests, the plants and the animals that live there. And so after they complete this activity, I've created a self-checking slide so that when students click on it, it will take them to the answer key so that that way they can check their own work. When they're done checking their work, I created a link back to the pathway where they were. So it will take them back to the slide they were on, not the beginning of the pathway. And then they can move to the next step of the pathway. The next step of the pathway is for them to do a vocabulary reader. So when they click the reader, it's going to take them to a whole new slides. And this reader is one that I created myself. Of course, you can go on and find readers that are already written for you and you can put those in to your pathway so that you're not having to create your own reader. But in this case, I wasn't able to find exactly what I needed and so I found that it was worth my time just to create my own. Now at this point, my students know that when they get to a reader, that it's going to work the same way as when they're working through their pathway. So a page of a reader is just a slide. And my readers, when I create my own, are interactive for the kids because I'm introducing them to vocabulary. And so I do have it connected to the dictionary so they can hear the words read to them. So they don't go into present mode for, for their readers. And I've taught them that so that that way they could engage with the reader in any of the links that I may have embedded. So they're gonna go through and they're gonna read my little reader on animals and habitats. And as they go through, they're going to know that they can click on any of the red words and it's gonna take them to the dictionary. And so that way, if they're having a hard time pronouncing the word, they can go ahead and they can click on the speaker and have it read to them. Tropical. Now again, this is just one of the tech tools that I use to support my students as they're independently working through their pathways. You don't even have to include a reader in yours. Again, it's all just going to, to depend on the objective of your pathway and what your students need to be supported. So they're gonna finish reading their reader then they can go back over to their pathway. The next step is taking them to their brain check. And their brain check is what have they learned from the reader that they just read. So some kids leave their all their tabs open as they work through and it does kind of become a little issue while they're learning how to do pathways because they get so many tabs open that sometimes they have a hard time finding their pathway tab. But they will eventually get used to it. They'll start to learn to close out their tabs. And because they learn to close out their tabs, when I think that it's helpful for them to have a tab open as they work through their pathway, I will somehow make sure I embed that into one of their steps. So this little bird is telling them to keep their vocabulary reader open. So if they did close it out, they can just quickly open it up again. And that's because it's going to help them with their brain check. The moose is saying to click the big tree to take your animals and habitats brain check. So when we click the big tree, it'll take us to the brain check. And the brain check is a Google form. And so they can just go ahead and put their name in and answer are all the questions that they would have learned from reading their vocabulary reader and then they will submit when they're done. The next step of their pathway is actually going to be the performance of understanding or their look for. The look for is habitat destruction and that's been the main focus of this pathway. They're gonna click the green box to read the article about habitat destruction and then the actual performance of understanding will come later after. They're gonna go to this National Geographic article and they're gonna read all about habitat destruction. After they read the article, they come back to their pathway and go to their performance of understanding. Now you notice that it's a forced copy of a Google document and when we create our pathways I'll talk to you more about the forced copies. This is just so that all students have their own copy which would basically be like them having their own piece of paper. So it's forcing me to make a copy and now I can come in and see the questions that I have to answer. So this is the look for where they're synthesizing what they've learned from the pathway with the article they just read and they're going to answer these questions so that I as their 
their teacher can then decide, did they get the learning? And then the kiddos know that they are at the end of their pathway when they've done the look for and they get to the learning and reflection piece. So our reflection is just a a Google form and they are going to answer questions about their worker habits and what they're most proud of, what they found difficult, and what would they change or do differently next time. And then how would they rate their understanding of change and adaption? The last piece of a reflection, and I always add this to my student reflections, is the opportunity for my students to provide me with feedback. As teachers, we need to remember that we have to be comfortable accepting feedback from our students because we're there for them. It's important that we're meeting their needs. And not only that, but we are trying to teach them to be learners and advocates for their own learning. And they can't do that if we're not giving them opportunities to understand what they need and to be able to verbalize their needs to the adult who's in charge of facilitating that learning and creating those opportunities for them. So I always put a question that's something like, what can Mrs. Thomas do to support you more as you work through your pathway? What would you change? And do you have suggestions to help make it better? Because I want to know. I want to know what my kids want and what they think. Kids are brilliant. And if we give them the opportunity to help us create their learning, it's going to be so much better than anything we as educators can do on our own. And then if you're just wondering what this last slide down here is, this is that answer key to the habitat sort. I always put the answer keys on the bottom, of course, and then that way they're not like working through an answer key as a step of their pathway. And that's just one example of a standards-based pathway that I've used to help supplement my science curriculum. And of course, we're going to explore other pathways. And like I said, next week together, we're going to build an example of a pathway that you could use like ELA or math where you're teaching a small group and the pathway could either supplement centers or station rotations or it could just be the playlist that the kids are working through doing must-dos and may-dos that are all embedded in their playlist. So we're going to build one that looks like that. But the purpose of today's video in module one was just to give you an overview of what is a learning pathway for students structurally and what are some of the ways that you could be using them and implementing them in your classroom. So I hope this overview of student pathways gave you some ideas and some things to think about. I'll leave you the link to the science pathway that we explored together in the description so that if you want to go back and check it out or even work through it on your own, it will be there to support you as you're thinking about how you can implement student pathways. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to tune in next week where we're going to work together to build a pathway step by step. Found today's content helpful? please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to the Teaching Without a Book YouTube channel so that you're not missing out on any innovative ideas. Okay, that's all for today. Now go use those creative brains to transform education. Have a great week.